Okay, so let's start uh, looking at the process of how to set up a, um, a cloud server with DigitalOcean. Um, and like I said, I really like DigitalOcean, really simple. Um, we'll walk, walk through, the, through the steps. Uh, but first you need to like uh, create an account. So they're gonna ask you for your email and password. Just follow the prompts, create a, then create account. They'll uh, probably gonna ask you for your, um, your credit card information and um, they have like very um, very um, inexpensive plans and then you can grow from there but um, let's let's look at how uh, we can then after you finish uh, reg registering then come back to the lesson um, and and let's start uh, setting up our first uh, cloud server so here's the control panel after you kind of like um, register and you have your your dashboard um, I have like two existing servers, but you, you're probably going to have this empty the first time you, you do this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a droplet. Droplet is what they call their, you know, their cloud servers. So when you click here, you're going to see some options. Um, so the first thing is um, you're going to have a different uh, options on distributions. And these are like the Linux servers uh, or Linux um uh, um, distros, um, which, you know, you have Ubuntu, FreeBSD, and all, all these others. We're going to use Ubuntu because that's what we used in Cloud9, and so it'd be good for you to, like, um, get acquainted with it. Uh, although once you do something in one one distro, it'll be easy to pick up any, any others. Um, they also have one-click apps, although I haven't used this because I usually like to customize my servers, but they have different like pre-built um servers with uh with images um so they have like docker drupal ghost these are like um blogging applications and cms um and they have a bunch of them and they're also like adding all the time but uh like i said we're gonna do um our own distribution with with ubuntu here the next thing is you're gonna choose a size and that's what i was referring um on on the intro how depending on how much cpu you want and how much disk drive uh, and how much data you're going to be transferring you're going to select uh, any of these options so you can see here they tell you how much per month and then how much per hour and um, like i mentioned you could have a server run just for you know two hours and you're going to pay i don't know less than a cent like 14 hundredths of a cent um, which is cool because you can get to play with a real server, install things, um, play with, with it, and then just destroy it, and they'll just charge you like, you know, a cent or whatever the case might be. So for now, we're going to just do the very, very basic five a month, uh, 500 megs of, of, of uh, RAM, one CPU, uh, 20 gigs of disk, and one terabyte of transfer. So that's, that's more than, than enough. Um, you can also select um, regions. The idea with regions is that if you have, like, let's say you're in in uh, your 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 main headquarters or the main site where people are going to be visiting your 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 website is one of these cities or near to of these cities, you select the one that's closest to them. So, for example, if I was starting a an English um, uh, I don't know blog about like, uh, you know, English meetups or English startups, I would probably choose London. So because most of my users are gonna be in cl close to London. Um, so bear, bear that in mind. Um, also, it's a good idea uh, once you like, you know, grow a little bit more to have servers um, in different regions because if one goes down, then you have another region available. Um, but I, you know, for now we're just gonna pick New York, and um, and these numbers here are like different like zones within New York. So um, the same thing is if you want to have some backup, you can have you know a server in two different regions, and this definitely uh, this means like they are the whole the servers are hosted in different data centers. Then there's some options like private networking. Um, so if you want to have like um, the, the 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 data transfer between servers be private you don't want people like reading them um, you also want backups uh, you can select on, on any of these options 
or we're going to just leave them um, uh, empty. Um, we're going to go through the SSA key. This one I already added, but we're going to go through that. So this is going to be empty on your on your server. And finally, you can um, you can create many droplets, not, not only one droplet, but many droplets. So you can just like add here the number. And you see that they each have a host name. You can also edit that that field if you want to like, you know, call this, uh, you know, flask blog NYC one, things like that. So then we go ahead and, and cr pl press create. And after a few seconds, sometimes like, you know, a minute, it'll create that new server. And um, once that happens, um, you're going to get uh, like you see here, an IP address <clears throat> that um, you can log this, the, you know, to to that server um, from anywhere in the world, and um, and also if you have, you're gonna have like a domain name um, pointing to it. That's the IP that you're gonna that you're gonna use. Um, so once that com that's complete, you're gonna get an email from from um, DigitalOcean with the root um, password and you're going to log into that to the to the um, to that server using that password and we're going to go through that process in the in the following uh, lesson.